What's going on guys? Really interesting topic today. Definitely different than our typical content. Um, I want to talk about why we collect as a whole, like psychologically, neuro neurologically, why do we collect? So uh, I looked into some articles and I started doing some research for myself, trying to learn why I do this. Because as some of you may know, I did a video not too long ago um, about you know the the um, harmful nature that collecting Pokemon can have, the impact it can have, um, you know if not done in moderation, which that can be kind of said about anything, right? Um, also, quick bit, I want to shout out my boy Nicholas. Thank you so much for shopping with me. I really appreciate it. Um, I did not post any videos of the sales that I made recently because honestly, the channel was growing. And unless you guys want to see my sales and you want to see videos showing the kind of stuff that I'm selling and shipping out, I will continue to do those videos. Just leave a comment if you want to see me do videos showing stuff that I've sold and plan on shipping out um, and how I package everything and the kind of freebies that I give in my shipments. But anyways, back to the subject. So I looked into a couple of articles and I got some points that I wrote down. Um, so first off, 33, if you didn't know this, now you know, 33 to 40% of Americans collect something. That was really interesting to me. Um, and, and it really, you know, comes to the point of, is this something that's always been in our DNA? Like since being hunter gatherers. Now you may think this is funny, Orion, we're talking about Pokemon cards. Okay. We're not talking about survival here, but I do believe collecting has been embedded in our nature from the very beginning. Um, and there's a lot of information on this and um, academic uh, articles written on this. Um, but, uh, you know, it's something that I've been worried about because I, I have gone down the rabbit hole. I've warned people about this and I still continue to go down the rabbit hole of collecting. Um, as many of you know, in my recent videos, um, if you haven't, check them out. But we talk about this first edition Charizard, which... I'm sorry, but one of the things that make people love collecting is just the prestige of finding certain collectibles for certain prices. Um, and I was very happy with the price I paid on this card and also happy to kind of verify and authenticate everything. Um, and we'll get to that point soon, but I was always worried. Ooh, let me refocus on that before it ruins the entire video. Um, I was always worried that you know, this is going to spiral out of control and you have a problem. You have an addiction. And that's something that I want to be transparent about on the channel. And I want other people to possibly learn from, especially the younger crowd that's earning, you know, paycheck to paycheck and spending it on cards. You should not do that. You should kind of save up your money, have a good foundation, have a good base. Um, and then on the side, you know, collect, invest. This channel really is geared more towards investing than collecting. Um, I think those are two very different things, uh, but they are also one of the same. Like when you're investing in stock, you're accumulating all of the stock. Is that not collecting stock? I don't know. That's for you guys to decide. Uh, but moving on, because uh, I've got a lot of points here that I've written down. I didn't want to just read over the articles again because I feel like that was kind of boring. Um, so I did a little bit more legwork than I typically do so that I can have my thoughts together uh, written down in bullet points in Chicken Scratch. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to read half these, but um, uh, rarity stimulates the brain. So, so apparently rare things stimulate our brain. This is why we're on the hunt. This is why we want to find uh, the best deals. And you guys can leave comments and tell me, you know, why you collect, uh, what got you you know, back into the hobby, what keeps you in the hobby, um, you know, what stimulates you, so to speak, um, you know, but rarity stimulating the brain was an important point that this neurologist made um, that also collects, which, you know, that could be a little bit biased considering that she also is a collector, but I also think that's amazing that people with master's degrees, with master degrees that are extremely educated are also high-end collectors. Now, you know, this neurologist that I've read about, you know, collected antiquities, but how do we know that Pokemon, especially old Pokemon, is not one day going to be an antiquity? Um, 
Right now, anything that's in the car world, in the automobile world, anything, when a car is 20 years old, it kind of becomes a classic, so to speak. Um, I think that kind of applies to Pokemon, and that's why I love vintage products. 1999 to 2003 is now a 20 plus year old era, and that makes it a classic. Um, and for me, that kind of, that I kind of identify with the whole antiquity uh, thing. Let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. Um, but okay, moving on. Um, so the the rarity that stimulates our brain. This was found through the oddball uh, experiment. Now the oddball experiment was a series of ordinary objects placed in front of the um, what what do you what do you call placed in front of the experiment um, the experiment participants. Um, and you have an, a line of ordinary objects, like kind of everyday objects that are placed in a line, one after another popping up uh, in front of these participants. And then a random object um, that's you know different, that's extraordinary as opposed to ordinary pops up. And parts of the brain um, and, the, and, the, and, and the frontal lobe kind of um, like, like fire, fire off. And so um, you know, our, we, we respond to things that are different. They make us feel something. They make us, um, they make our, it stimulates our brains. Um, um, and they did this, they found this out um, a long time ago with magnetic resonance, mach magnetic resonance machines um, that could keep track of how, what parts of our brain uh, were firing off. Um, registers the brain activity by showing ordinary objects with extraordinary objects. And obviously when you see the extraordinary objects, that machine um, kind of registers that your brain is firing off. Um, the next point, uh, pride in acquiring objects. That's kind of what I just did with the Charizard, right? Um, you know, there's kind of this flex. I kind of call it the flex. Um, as Grandpa Joe in the last stream said, bro, you're just flexing. You don't wanna, you don't wanna verify these cards. Um, as much as I would like to think that's not true and I wanted to verify the cards. I think, yes, there's also definitely an aspect of the flex, you know, showing off that, hey, I have these kind of caliber of cards. And we see that everywhere. I had a seller reach out to me on from eBay because I'm still looking at first edition Charizard because I'm really, I'm kind of getting into wanting to build a first edition Charizard position and start and collect those solely. But they're way too expensive. Don't give me that look. My wife heard that pop, opened up the door and went, anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, I looked on that seller's page and they had a first edition booster box is one of their top posts. And I thought, man, what a flex, but this is, this is the community. You know, this is the, this is the, um, the behavior that, you know, being a collector, uh, exudes. Um, uh, next point is. Uh, acquiring said rare items for modest price points. Um, thank you. We've got some mail. We are saving that for a mail day video. I'm sorry. I'm not going to open that until we have a mail day video, even though I really do want to open it, but I'm going to wait. Um, acquiring said rare items for a modest price point, right? That is one of my favorite things. That's one of my favorite things. You know, when you find something that's really valuable and you know, you look in the sold listings, you know, eBay, for example, you look in the sold listings and stuff sells for way higher than what you're planning on buying it for. And you make, you make a bunch of offers and you know, the sellers write you off and they ignore you or they're rude to you. And then you get that one seller that's rational, that sells you it for a price or that needs the money. And you get this said rare item for a modest price point. You get it for less than what the market is selling it for. That is one of the best feelings. I think everybody here can relate to that. Um, and I think that's really what makes a good collector is finding these things and, and not just buying them like crazy. Now, when I started, I can't say that I was a good collector because I was just buying stuff off the wazoo. I was just buying whatever I felt like buying. I was losing money on some theme decks that I sold. And gradually I got to this point of being a, a better collector that said, you know what? I am not paying over this price. I will let somebody else that hasn't done their due diligence pay this price for this object, whether it's a card, a theme deck. And I think good collectors, you know, um, seasoned and conditioned collectors get used to this and get really good at it. And they get good at separating 
their emotions uh, and their rationale and you know whether buying something is worth it and is the price point um, you know they factor that in so getting stuff for a price below market kind of the modest price point I think that's very important for collectors um, and it makes you feel good for example um, I bought the Suicune from Crown Zenith that I've been gassing up. I love the Suicune from Crown Zenith. I, I think it's arguably better to just buy that Suicune than buying Crown Zenith. But I also think they're very head-to-head. -head. I think Suicune is super undervalued, and it'll be super cheap to ship that card out because it's light and it's small. Whereas Crown Zenith ETB is going to cost you like 20 bucks to ship that out. So I, 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 I don't know. But sealed product is definitely the move. Anyways, moving forward, uh, for example, I got that Suicune for $40 with $5 shipping, so $45. Then this week, I got the same Suicune for $35, $30 with $5 shipping. Now, typically that does happen in the Pokemon market. You see stuff come down a little bit and then it rises back up. But in this case, I really feel like I really feel like it's just prices that are fluctuating. I don't feel like it's necessarily that prices are dipping because there's no product left. The product has sold out. So technically prices should already start to rebound, but they're not. People are kind of just paying whatever they feel like paying. And there's so many of these Suicunes out there that, you know, that might be the case. Whereas a Crown Zenith sealed ETB is probably going to hold a much more, um, a much more linear uh, graph value. Whereas the single prices kind of are, can go all over the place. Um, okay, moving forward. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Um, my wife is doing some laundry right now, and we have a lot of laundry to do, so that is warranted for sure. Uh, but there might be some noise in the background. This house is always noisy. We foster dogs. We have a one-year-old. We have four dogs in the house right now. There's a lot going on all the time. Bear with me. Um, okay, a sense of history. That's a really interesting one. I'm really glad I made this bullet point list because I definitely wouldn't have kept all this together in my head. Um, while the bar was a little bit slow last night, I decided to figure out and plan ahead for my next video, which I never do this. But I'm glad that I did. Um, the history behind things. Sometimes I come into this room and I'm like, wow, this is all amazing. And, and occasionally I look through my cards, but a lot of times all this stuff just sits here and I don't really look at it too much. But after reading these articles, I realized that I had something that was very healthy for me, you know, and everything is best in moderation, right? Don't go too crazy, right? Which I definitely went too crazy the last two years. Um, but everything around me, I look around now and I don't just see product anymore. I see a history. I see a history of all the stuff from when I was a little kid. Um, nostalgia, if you will. A lot of people kind of attribute Pokemon collecting nowadays, like why people collect. We attribute this to nostalgia. But I look around this room and I've got posters, I've got magazines, I've got booklets, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got modern, I've got vintage. I got a book bag up in this corner, um, empty boxes, whatever. It's all about a history. And that history is really interesting and it's really important. And I think for some of us, it's more important to capture the history so that we can pass that down to the next generation than it is necessarily to just have this stuff. And I think more and more that's becoming a reason why I continue to collect is to collect the history and see what kind of rare things I can go after. Um, as the channel grows, as you know, revenue comes in, as I make more sales online selling cards in my Mercari store, uh, as the bar does better and I make more money at the bar, I will be definitely expanding the collection into other things. Um, Game Boy games, uh, old consoles. Um, these are things that really interest me that are also a part of the history of Nintendo and Pokemon. And I think is a collector at the point that I'm at, there's only so many things that I want left. I only, I'm, I, I have like a couple theme decks that I'm missing from from like up to 2007, you know? I only have a couple theme decks that I'm missing. That's my niche. For those of you that are new to the channel, my niche is theme decks. I really like theme decks. Um, I'm also missing some booster boxes, like four or five booster boxes that I don't have um, that, are, that are gonna be empties that I will fill with cards because I have a lot of bulk in the background um, that you guys can't see. Um, but those, you know, there's not a lot that, that I want that's left in the hobby. There's a couple Charizard cards. Um, and then, you know, if I really wanted to get crazy, I could go and complete sets. But that's kind of a scary thing to think about. But in terms of, like, how I collect, the way I go after boxes and displays and things of that nature, 
I really think the Game Boy games is one of the next frontiers. I didn't play the card game much when I was a kid. I collected, I traded. That was how I loved Pokemon. That was my love for Pokemon being expressed. Um, but what I did do a lot on car rides, I would sneak it to school, I would take it to, to after school care, um, Game Boy games. I played the Game Boy games religiously. Now, I did not have the yellow, blue, red, but I had fire red and leaf green, sapphire, ruby, and emerald. And those were the main games that I grew up playing that I remember so vividly. Um, I had the Game Boy uh, Color, which I still have it. Um, where, where, where is that? Where is that Game Boy Color, actually? Oh, it's all the way up there. I got my Game Boy Color all the way up there. I had the Advance, Game Boy Advance. I had the Game Boy SP. I recently sold all that stuff on my Mercari about a year ago, which I'm really starting to regret now because I'm realizing there was such a big market, not just for the money, but also for the history. I wish I wouldn't have let go of that stuff, but that was those sales were helping me get my store up and running. But anyways, I'm getting really off topic, um, but I'm not, because we're talking about the history, you know, and that's what makes, you know, quality content. I thought a lot about how much content I'm putting out and is that healthy for me and do I enjoy it? And I wasn't because sometimes I just knew I could do better. And I think all YouTubers, all content creators go through this rut of being like, I can do better. I can come out with better content. And my best content was rewarded with a lot of views. So I'm learning that if I really, if I really want the channel to grow in a positive way, I've got to put in the time and the effort. And that might not show itself in edits. It might not show itself in cringy thumbnails but it will show itself in the due diligence that I do uh, in the hobby. And I think another video I wanna do is, is actually talking about the history of Pokemon and where it comes from. Um, anyways, um, and, and um, Matsuhiro, uh, Mits Mitsuhiro uh, Arita, um, that's, he's an amazing person and really there should be an entire episode stream video done just on the original illustrator of Pokemon and how important he is to this hobby and where he got his inspiration from. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm about to go off on tangents about that whole story, but um, uh, sense of history, enhance network of friends. Guys, that's a huge one, right? Because all of you here, I consider my friends now and I've kind of on my Instagram, I pretty much like unfollowed everybody because I realized <laughs> I'm in a different chapter in my life and moving forward, you know, I, I don't want to be attached to everybody from my high school and people that I grew up with. I have a very short list of close friends that I still hold dear to me that I want to keep in my social network. But for the most part, my social network became this YouTube channel. It became this community and I am a collector. I've always been a collector. It used to be sneakers. Um, before that, it was kind of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, I had a binder of Pokemon, but really I was more of a Yu-Gi-Oh collector, but I never found my Pokemon cards. And for those of you that are new to the channel, I've said this several times, but I never found my Pokemon card binder, which had so much stuff in it. I had a lot of Japanese cards when I was a kid. Um, I remember one Christmas, I specifically asked to order just Japanese Pokemon cards because I thought the Japanese language and the writing and the artwork on the cards, um, you know, going hand in hand with the language and how beautiful it looked. I, I was very, I, I feel like I was very intelligent as a little kid doing collectibles because I knew there were English cards, but I didn't want them. I wanted the Japanese cards at a very young age. So anyways, um, I had a big binder full of this stuff and I never found it. And I think that lack of closure set me down the rabbit hole of what is Pokemon. Now I have been collecting Yu-Gi-Oh again slowly um, and I have all of the starter decks, but I really do want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh as well. As the channel grows, that will also be something that I'll be thinking about. Um, exclusive tins from the old days, you know, stuff that I grew up with that I really want to revisit. Um, and also have some of that history that I can pass down once again. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the network, enhancing your network of friends, right? So now I've got people that I message on Instagram from YouTube. I respond to the comments. Um, I, I see you guys in the live stream and we chop it up in the live stream, which I've seen that everyone gets on at about six and seven o'clock at night. So I really need to act on that. And so 
when I can in the future, if I'm doing live streams, I'm going to shoot for six or seven o'clock at night because those are my favorite times when I'm doing the live stream and I'm hanging out with you guys. But there's also a balance where doing videos feels really, really good like these, where I have, I can, I have my thoughts to myself. I don't have to worry about the chat or engage it. Um, I'm just, I want to get this point across so badly. And that's why I started the channel because I had things that I wanted to say about Pokemon, about the collectibles. Um, um, anyways, I do want to say one more thing uh, before we get to the next point. I appreciate all of you guys that support me and have been a part of this channel. You guys have kept me going. The kind of comments I've seen, the kind of support I've seen, you guys are my family. You guys are my family here. And I can't imagine doing anything else with my life right now. Like it's YouTube. It's it's always been YouTube, and I guess I just didn't know that till now. Um, uh, anyways, my uh, my Maltese are being little little turds right now. They're they're making a ruckus in the background. Um, I think they know that I'm doing a video. Um, love of Pokemon came first. Well, so it was love of collecting certain items came first, and then in second came maybe a community or a bartering between. Um, friends or acquaintances that were also fellow collectors. And I kind of put that in my own words on these notes. Uh, love of Pokemon came first. Then the community being built around it came next. Um, friendships forged through the vehicle of collecting will no doubt expand our social lives. Now this was written, this was written out. These things were written out by a neurologist, right? Someone who's very well burst, <laughs> very well versed on how the human brain works. Um, and that was that was really a, a whole paradigm change for me, thinking that like, oh wow, like this thing is kind of taking over my life and it's, it's becoming my identity. And that's, my Instagram does not have posts with Pokemon. I do stories with Pokemon, but I don't do posts with Pokemon because, and I may do a separate Instagram at some point, but I don't think I don't think I want to or need to. I think you have to have your own personal life separate from your collector world. Um, and um, what was I going to say? Um, Friendships forged through the vehicle of collecting will no doubt expand social lives. Love of Pokemon came first and the community being built came next. Um, i trying to think about what this, uh, what the neurologist was saying. Oh, right. So she's saying that, you know, you know, there's this person that's academically acclaimed that's writing about how collecting can be a beneficial thing that's good for you. And, you know, I think it's kind of biased because she's also a collector, um, but it's also really refreshing to have a reinforced support um, ideology that, you know, supports why I'm collecting and makes me feel a little bit less irrational. Um, and I'm, and I hope that it'll make you guys feel a little bit better about it too, because it turns out guys, this is actually good for our mental health. Um, now if you're home all day looking at stuff, I, I don't think that that's good for your physical health. I haven't been to the gym in like 10 days. A lot of that is not just due to my work schedule, but it's also due to the time I spend researching cards and trying to find the best deals and messaging people. You know, that takes a lot of time, but there's apparently a really positive part of that for our mental health. Um, but uh, yeah, it's talking about the community and the friendships that are created. One part of me feels like, no, all we care about is the cards and the new sets that are coming out. But if you dig a little bit deeper, we're all looking for more meaning in our lives. We're all looking for friendships. We're all looking for fellowship. We're all looking for um, people with uh, like-minded opinions on this stuff that wanna talk about it. Um, and I think that that's really important because it took me my entire life to get to this point, to accept who I am and accept that I've always loved collecting and particularly trading cards. And if I wasn't so embarrassed about what other people would think about me, I would have gone down this route to begin with. You know, you're worried about high school and getting bullied. And I was, I've talked about this too on the channel. I was bullied really, really bad. Like I was, I was bullied to the point of crying multiple times, you know, after school, calling my dad, telling him that I didn't want to go to cross country practice, telling him that I didn't want to go to play lacrosse. Like I was, I hated my experience in, in middle school. 
Um, I asked to be taken out of public school and put into private school. And I thought that that would be better for me. And what I learned was it was so much worse. It was a different kind of treatment, but it was worse. You know, I got kind of bullied in public school, but then I went to private school and it was a whole new kind of bullying. It was, it was sinister and parents and teachers didn't care because it was just like, Oh, kids are going to be kids. Uh, it was, <laughs> I'm not going to go into it, but, um, all that bullying and all that anxiety that, that, that stayed with me as an adult. And I was very cautious about how I presented myself. You know, I wanted to be you know, a big, strong guy with fast cars and nice watches and, um, you know, nice clothes and nice sneakers and you know, cool cars. You know, I, I just, I had this false sense of what I wanted my reality to be and what I wanted my value to come from. And I'm glad, I'm kind of glad I went through all that because all the bullying, I mean, in some ways, you know, my sister, who also kind of bullied me, argues that the bullying made me a stronger person. And that could be true. I became a very resilient person. And that's why anybody who leaves like negative comments or does weird stuff on YouTube, like none of that stuff really is ever going to affect me because I've been bullied far worse than anybody could bully me on YouTube. Um, and I'm not a bad guy, so I'm not really worried about that. I know that I'm inherently a pretty good person. Um, even though I think we all have some form of, you know, evil thoughts that go in our head, you know, negative, negativity has a way around everything. Um, but, um, yeah, I've come to this point where now I'm in my life. I'm sorry about ranting guys. This is just a very important to me to talk about the community and the friendship that I've built. And I'm going to get to the next point here shortly. And the list is almost done, but, um, I'm, I'm living my life over again. This YouTube is literally an expression of me living my life over again. It's an example of do what you love because ultimately no matter if it works out or not, at least you're happy doing what you love. And like, I kind of just like unfollowed everybody on my Instagram and was like, you know what? No one understands me. No one cares what I'm doing. And I have less anxiety watching what everybody's doing in their lives. And now I primarily focus on myself and like, that was one of the best things that I ever did was just starting to focus on myself and not worrying so much about what everybody else thinks of me. Um, okay, moving forward, and I'm gonna make sure this is uh, focused in because you know I've watched a video before and it went out of focus and I noticed like half the video was out of focus, so I don't want that to happen again. Um, let's see. Okay, organization and arranging. So there's a part of our brain that also um, gets positive stimulation from organizing and arranging these things. This is an, again, a perfect example. All my stuff is organized and arranged. You know, it's, I'm also very OCD. So that's one thing I will note. Not everybody is going to be like this. I am naturally OCD, ADD, ADHD. Um, I took, I took meds for that, even though I think they'll, they'll, they'll pretty much say that anybody is ADHD or ADD. My mom said that I was properly diagnosed. What is going on with Callie? Huh? Why is Callie screaming? Callie Why is he screaming? Because I was giving him a haircut. Oh, okay. My wife is giving the dogs a haircut, so that is a little bit of a, of a reason why they might be squealing in the background. Um, this is just it's just typical typical my style of making videos. I just do them when I can do them, and whatever is going on in my life, it's it's going on. Um, but, um, my mom says that I was for sure properly diagnosed and that I definitely have uh, attention disorder. And that's probably true. If you guys watch my videos, you can see me kind of go off on tangents in different directions. Um, but I definitely think that goes hand in hand with like me organizing everything here. Um, my display case in the back room, like who does this? What kind of insane person goes through this level of organization? You've got to have some kind of attention um, disorder where you just got to always mess with things and, and organize them. I don't know. That's one way that I think I convince myself why I, I do all this or set all this up the way it is. Because um, quite frankly, I haven't seen any other YouTuber. I haven't seen a streamer. I haven't seen anybody on YouTube do what I did with a shelf like this. Now, there may be imitators in the future and not even imitators or copycats. Like this is an awesome idea and people should do it if they, if they want a background like this or if they just want a cool game room. 
that looks kind of like a hobby shop. Um, but this is original and like, and, and, and organ or organizing is a big part of collecting. And so I'm seeing that these were beneficial things that give me pride and joy. Um, and, and, and maybe for you guys, if you guys chime in in the comments, you know, I'm sure that some of you are very organizational too. Some people put stack up their cases of sealed product. You know, some people have bins, some people have shelves. I kind of have a little bit of everything. Um, but let me know what you guys do in terms of organizing stuff. Um, the next point, and these are our last points, um, control. Now I starred this point because I thought it was really important. So much of our life we don't have control of. I mean, we should, but we don't. There's too much going on at play. You've got the bills, you've got your cost of living, you've got, you need your phone, you need your car, you need shelter. You need a lot of these things are necessities. Uh, she's up, babe. Yes, I know. She usually wakes up 30, 40 minutes. Please don't say that. Um, my wife right now blames me for waking up our daughter, but she does tend to wake up 30 to 40 minutes, um, into her nap. And she went down and I started this video and it's been exactly 32 minutes. So, or 31 minutes. So I... Don't think she's waking up early, um, but there there is going to be crying in the background. Um, so I start the point of control. So and I try to keep my voice down. And y'all have mentioned this. I try to keep my voice down in the videos. I don't. I'm not yelling. I'm. Trust me. I could definitely be louder in my videos. But um, control. I think control was such an important point to make because control is is we have such a lack of it in this society. We are constantly controlled by all these things that we have to pay for, these necessities, um, and having cards and organizing them and collecting them and you know deciding what we're gonna sell them for and when we're gonna sell them, this gives us some sense of control and it's very important in life. It's very beneficial for uh, your mental health and your emotional, uh, um, psychological health um, to have some sense of control in your life. I feel like in my life specifically, I have such a lack of control in everything that's going on. And this channel and me collecting has definitely given me that sense of control. Um, so I think this is a big one that a lot of people are gonna relate with, that sense of control and being able to be the decider, the decision maker for, you know, if you're gonna sell your cards, who you're gonna sell them to, when you're gonna sell them, what price you're gonna sell them for. Yeah, the market the market kind of takes a little bit of that control away, but I think I'm a perfect example of someone that goes against the grain of like what the market prices stuff at and prices what they feel like they're gonna price this stuff at. For example, I buy theme decks for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars all the time. I sell them all the time for $100, $150, $200, I decide, I have control of that situation. You know, I buy singles for a certain price and decide that in the future I'm gonna sell them at this price. I don't care what the market thinks. Um, I think that Pokemon, not Pokemon, I think collecting gives us a great sense of control. I think a lot of people can relate on that. Um, taste um, and knowledge accumulate. Taste and knowledge accumulate. So definitely, so having high taste and like what cards are valuable. Now, this is tough because taste and knowledge, you can accumulate this, but at the end of the day, you'll also have to have the means to go after this stuff. And Pokemon has gotten so expensive. Theme decks are my niche and I have been priced out of buying theme decks lately. I can't afford what people are putting theme decks up for sale for. And I understand now that this has been happening the last couple of years collectors are getting a little bit annoyed because the stuff that they were collecting and buying is just getting more and more expensive. And so they're having to pass those costs on. If I buy a theme deck for a hundred now, I've got to sell it for 200. I don't have a choice. Um, you have to pass those costs on or you're just not making any money from doing it. Um, and not to mention if you want to collect, you're, you're hoping to get, well, we'll, we'll talk about that, but taste and knowledge accumulate. One thing that I want to say about this point before we move on to the next point is that you should, before you buy a bunch of stuff, and now that my daughter's up, I can be a little bit louder, or maybe, maybe actually, 
I'm going to keep it at the same level because she might be trying to put her down again. Um, before you go out and you buy a bunch of stuff, make sure you know the market. Make sure you understand the market. Make sure that you know, you're looking at the sold listings constantly. Make sure that you care enough about what you're collecting to do some due diligence. Do your due diligence. Learn about what you're collecting. Don't just go head first into it because you know what? I went head first into it. And granted, I learned by paying certain prices and then seeing that same card go for less. I kind of learned the hard way, you know, and I think we all go through this where you learn the hard way of buying stuff and overpaying for stuff, but just like there's a way to avoid that. And that's just accumulate tons of knowledge and information regarding whatever it is you're collecting. Even if you're watching this and you don't care about Pokemon, but you're interested in the collecting aspect of, you know, psychology and neurology, um, learn, learn, educate yourself as much as possible because no matter how much money you have, it's, it really just a lot of the enjoyment comes from knowing what the real true value is or, you know, knowing what you feel is fair for you to pay, to feel like you did well and you can take pride in that collecting, that, that collection, that collector item. Um, next thing, uh, desired returns. And this goes hand in hand with control and taste and knowledge accumulating. Um, you can have, you know, high taste and knowledge for, for collectibles, whatever it is you're collecting. Like I just bought this first edition Zard, but I could have easily last year bought that first edition Charizard for five grand for 5,500. I was very tempted to for a PSA five. I didn't, I accumulated knowledge. I accumulated information. I had you know, I have now a taste for these higher end cards because now I'm starting to start collecting them. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to look at the sold listings heavily. Not only am I going to look at the sold listings heavily, I'm going to look at the PSA uh, grade chart prices. So I looked at the prices of the chart and a lot of them had sold for 5000 And then I looked at the sold listings on eBay for other slabs as well as raw uh from what I was deeming legitimate, authentic Charizard first editions. And a lot of them were going for about $3,000. So I kind of chose a middle ground. I averaged those two. I said 5,000 and 3,000 for the raw, 5,000 for the graded, for what's on PSA. And I came up with $4,000 was the price that I was willing to pay. That came from two, three, four years of educating myself a ton. Um, my mom's calling me right now. I'm gonna have to hang up on that call. Actually, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to continue. Um, uh, the desired returns, the, uh, when you have desired returns, your pleasure, pleasure center burns brighter. Um, so what, what this means is more so than just having the items are the actual returns that we can desire and think about, uh, for these things. Um, when we buy stuff, like I told you guys, I don't even look at a lot of the stuff that I have. It's just here or it's stored or it goes into a bin and I never look at it again. But I have an idea. I have this fantasy, if you will, of these desired returns that I'm going to get. Um, Crown Zenith, the Suicune is a great example. Again, I know I keep bringing up Suicune, but I just think it's a phenomenal card with a beautiful artwork. Um, Crown Zenith Suicune is like 30, 40 bucks right now. I think it's a $200 card. I think that it's a $200 card. I think it's really underrated. I think that for many years, people are going to regard that as one of the nicest cards that came out in Sword and Shield. Guys! Guys! I, I don't know if my mom is here and that's why she was calling me. I have no idea. But I'm going to continue because my dogs are being really loud and making a quality video really hard to achieve. Um, I appreciate you guys for staying with me. Um, and dealing with this for so long. We're almost at 1,400 subscribers, and almost every video I've ever done has been interrupted by a dog barking, or a child crying, or one of my parents coming to visit us at the house. Um, anyways, um, and I'm very lucky to have such a vibrant, active family, you know, a lot of stuff going on. I'm lucky, I, I always stay busy. Um, Collecting transcends being a mere pastime and becomes a passion. That was such a good point to come to an ending on this video on. Um, it's no longer about just like I'm passing time and you know, I'm just doing this now and then I'll forget about it and look back, back at it later. 
Um, I think that's what collecting Pokemon specifically, I think that's what it was when I was a kid. I kind of collected the cards and then they went in a binder and I, I forgot about them and it was what it was. But now as an adult, I'm realizing all the other benefits that it can ha that I can get out of collecting long term and I'm turning this into a full time passion. When I tell people what I do, especially at the bar, um, my uh, oh, you're so cute. Alive? No, it's not alive, and I have to finish. And my mom just called, and I couldn't pick up her phone. You want to say hi since you're all cute? Oh, say hello. Hi, everyone. You're the cutest little girl ever. Sorry, you weren't being loud. I'm just annoyed. I know. I know. Thank you. I appreciate saying that. Can you text my mom and tell her I'm finishing up a video? Yeah. She's she's, she's blowing me up right now. Little I'm okay. And he looks great. His haircut looks really great. My wife was cutting the dog's hair. Um But yeah, this is a full-time passion. When people come to the bar and they ask me what I do, I'm like, "Well, I run this bar, but uh additionally, um also this is a passion for me and I want to do it for the rest of my life." Um, and then to end this, cause my mom keeps calling me and I'm late to get to the bar shift, but I really wanted to do a quality video. Uh, the anticipation of reward is more exciting than the actual, um, act of possessing an item. I think that goes hand in hand with what we just talked about. Um, the anticipation, the fantasy of what this stuff could be valued at. I don't care where the market goes. I love my collection. The price of my Charizards could Plummet, for sure. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that the hobby is way too mainstream at that point. But um, that being said, I'm sure I'm late. I'm sure there's people at the bar waiting for me. So I have to get out of here. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please make sure to comment. I'm not going to say the other things. Uh, just comment. Engage us. Let's start a dialogue here. And um, thank you guys so much. Next time I do a stream, it'll probably be 6 or 7 at night. I really appreciate you guys. We've got mail days coming up. We've got other topics coming up. We've got a lot of content coming up. Um, and I will be okay. doing another video soon. I got I to gotta peace out. I got to head out. I can hear my mom on speakerphone yelling right now. So I got a peace. Bye, y'all.